Welcome back to Paul's Tech News, the weekly show where I consume only the choicest and most succulent tidbits of PC hardware related tidings from the past seven days, and then unceremoniously regurgitate them to all of you as sort of a tech news slurry, a mechanized motherboard milkshake, if you will, that can be consumed at your leisure. Cheers. So naturally the biggest news on everyone's mind is where has Paul been? I know, it's like I'm not even on YouTube anymore and the weekly tech news hasn't been so weekly of late. The answer, Hawaii. I had a trip planned in 2020 that got rescheduled, had a great time with the family and all. Fortunately, nothing notable happened while I was away, so now it's back to the grind. So I can inform you all about exciting stuff like the embarrassing RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte launch, TSMC delaying their US-based fabs due to a lack of US-based talent, and the largest and most powerful SSD ever created, for now. So hook up those feeding tubes, it's time for tech news. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by Thermaltake's CTE series cases, the C750 Air and C750 TG. CTE stands for Centralized Thermal Efficiency and the 90 degree rotated motherboard mount, dual chamber design, and three included 140 millimeter CT140 fans ensure that your PC parts stay cool and quiet no matter what hardware you install. The C750 Air maximizes airflow with extensive ventilation, while the C750 TG provides an additional four millimeter tempered glass front panel, and both support up to EATX sized motherboards. For more on Thermaltake's CTE series cases, click the sponsor link in the video description. When a new GPU launches, it's typically big news in the tech world, and a flurry of benchmark tests and full reviews hit the feeds as soon as the embargo lifts. So perhaps you missed it when the RTX 4060 Ti 16 gig launched on Tuesday, because none of those things happened. It's almost as if Nvidia is embarrassed and painfully aware of how little their new GPU offers in terms of actual performance, particularly given its $500 price tag, $100 more than the RTX 4060 Ti 8 gig, a card that was already put through the ringer by tech media due to how little it offered in terms of actual performance, even with its $400 price tag. Nvidia, for their part, seems to have no plans to alter the prices or positioning of their 40 series GPUs, despite how obvious it is that they are squeezing gamers for every possible dime they can get. Instead, they're now just hoping people won't notice the new cards that come out so they can escape the duly warranted criticism. There is no Founders Edition 4060 Ti 16 gig, there were no samples seeded to reviewers by Nvidia, and even board partners had nothing to offer those who asked. Even if they did, it wouldn't have mattered since Nvidia didn't provide a working driver until after the supposed launch date. And did it even launch? You'd be hard pressed to find one here in the US several days later. Newegg has zero listings, even these $600-ish ones are the eight gig version. I did find one, there's this douchebag marketplace vendor trying to charge 800 bucks for one, sold and shipped by 5C Go. Here's an idea, how about you 5C Go f yourself? The real reason for the launch shadiness became evident as some units got into the hands of reviewers after launch. Like when MSI showed on their Insider Weekly Livestream Wednesday that the 4060 Ti 16 gig can actually be slower than the eight gig version, a video that is now set to private presumably due to cowardice. But then Steve at Hardware Unboxed posted an actual review early Friday morning, and yes, if the $400 4060 Ti 8 gig was laughably bad, the $500 16 gig version is simply insulting to you and your entire family going back many generations. Yes, the increased VRAM setup helps out, particularly in newer and more memory hungry games at 1440p, but only a marginal overall uplift in frame rates versus the 8 gig version leaves you with, as Steve puts it, a horribly priced graphics card that you can ignore. And given the super soft launch this week, maybe you already did. Speaking of hardware launches you can probably ignore, it's looking pretty certain that Intel has a Raptor Lake refresh planned that they'll be calling 14th Gen Core, as I discussed in the last episode of Tech News. And what a surprise, just as I predicted, we're probably looking at essentially the same CPUs as 13th Gen Core, with some binning and some tweaking done so they can hit clock speeds that are 100 to 200 megahertz faster. Twitter leaker Momomo underscore US shared a Benchlife.info article Tuesday that claims to have the specs for the K-SKU flagships with a Core i9-14900K 
i7 14700K and i5 14600K listed. These are definitely still rumors, but if true, the 14th gen chips will have 125 watt TDPs and maintain compatibility with LGA1700 motherboards, presumably with a BIOS update. The 14700K is the only chip with an updated core configuration going from eight to 12 E cores for 28 threads total. And all three CPUs whose specs were shown hit peak turbo frequencies that are 200 megahertz faster than their 13th gen counterparts. As has been typical with Intel CPU launches late in the year, we'll probably see these three K SKUs as well as their KF variants without iGPUs launch sometime around October with the more mainstream CPUs in the stack with lower core counts and TDPs going up for sale in early 2024. I do find it harder to get excited about refresh launches like these, but hey, I had some leftover mac and cheese for a late night snack last night, and that was pretty good. So maybe warmed over Raptor Lake won't be too horrible either. TSMC was supposed to be on track to spin up their first US-based chip factory, subsidized by the Chips Act, in late 2024. But on Thursday, they said that delays will push that into 2025, and those delays are happening because of stupid, fat, lazy Americans. I might be paraphrasing a bit, but pushing the opening of the $40 billion factory back due to an insufficient amount of skilled workers, as a TSMC spokesperson told Ars Technica, sure sounds like they're doing their best to pin the blame on anyone but themselves. There are multiple factors at play, of course, such as the US government who would prefer to show timely results coming from the CHIPS Act, the Biden administration who would like to tout job creation, TSMC who wants to spend as little money as possible on the whole deal, and the skilled workers themselves who do exist but would prefer to be properly compensated for their work. Already there are tensions between US-based union workers and TSMC management, who have brought in as many as 500 more workers from Taiwan to assist, but drawing the line between what assistance is required to get the job done and where TSMC is simply undercutting US-based workers in favor of cheaper labor that they can bring in from Taiwan has been a challenging task. There are many eyeballs watching the progress though, so geopolitical snafus notwithstanding, we hope that there will be no further delays so cutting edge domestic chip production can get underway ASAP. Speaking of things that need to be completed ASAP, it's time for tech briefs. I've spent too long on this transition already. Solidime introduced a new product to make us all self-conscious about our size this week, the size of our solid state drives that is, which range from woefully inadequate to self-destructed upon the mere mention of the Steam summer sale. Well, feast your eyes on this. A 61 terabyte SSD, enough to store your games and your porn, called the Solidime D5 P5336. It even sports up to seven gigabytes per second read speeds, despite using SK Hynix's inexpensive 3D QLC NAND. But note the U.2, U.3, or E1.L interface, as you probably won't be able to just drop this into your gaming PC. Here's another entry in the saga of the crypto mining boom of the early 2020s. Counterfeit GPU operations are still underway and Chinese authorities from the Bincheng district in Binzhou city have arrested 22 lawless thugs in the latest video card bust. Approximately 2 million US dollars worth of cards were recovered when a small warehouse was raided. The cards had been stripped from mining rigs and were being cleaned and repackaged to be sold as new. And this is an unfortunate reality for PC gamers who are on the lookout for a deal on what is usually the most expensive component in their PC. GPU deals that look too good to be true are often sourced from such illicit operations. Surely these racketeers will learn their lesson in Chinese prison. Intel recently announced that their cute little Nook PCs, the tiny ones that are so very adorable, will be taken out back and given the shotgun treatment, so to speak. Intel isn't going to make them anymore, so sorry Nook lovers. But before they pulled the trigger, they asked if their partners might want to take in the little Nooks, and Asus has stepped up first by obtaining a non-exclusive license to produce the diminutive computers. Of course, being Asus, they didn't want to start with just a tiny box. No, they've gone and announced an updated ROG Gooch? How the fuck do you pronounce that? Anyway, the new version has RGB, of course, as well as a 13900KF and a GeForce RTX 40 series GPU in a 10 liter case. And it's still somehow kind of cute. Maybe Gooch is like Gucci Gucci Goo. You, you know, like you'd say a little baby. So cute. Gooch, Gooch, Gooch. Gucci 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 Gucci. I hope you don't use most of that, Joe. 
It's a cute little gooch. It's a cute little gooch. Lastly, though, the most important part of today's tech news is an update on me. What has been going on? I have talked about a transition and my moving and all, but not many recent updates. Basically, all that stuff is happening. Construction, the moving of lots of stuff, remodeling and all the stress and excitement that comes along with it. And yes, I have been recording stuff and documenting it, but I hope you'll bear with me and my lack of uploads for just a little while longer. I wanted to show all the work in an interesting way, which meant waiting until a lot of it was done before getting videos out. So very soon I'll kick off a new series and I think you guys will really enjoy it. Until then, I will be continuing this weekly Sunday tech news series with a few other videos here and there as well. And for those who are attending, I will also be at LTX next weekend in Canada, July 29th to 30th. So if you see me there, you should walk up to me and say hello and we can have an awkward little conversation for a few minutes. I'm really looking forward to it. For real though, I am. But I'm out of time for this video, so there you have it guys, tech news for the week. And if you liked it, click that like button or leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the description if you're interested. And don't forget to check out my store at paulsharbor.net for high quality merchandise, t-shirts, hoodies, beer sets, and more. Subscribing to my channel is always a good call too. Thanks again everyone, and we'll see you next week.